Welcome back YouTubers, I'm your host TubeBunny and today I've got a special holiday gift for my viewers. Uh, a lot of you may remember back a very many years ago I did a tutorial video on PS2 and how to install Freemook Boot onto a memory card. A lot of you may know that video is getting very very old and it uh, definitely some parts of it need some updating and so as a holiday gift special to all my members and viewers we are doing a follow up to that video today and we are going to be learning once again how to exploit run homebrew on and ultimately put free boot on a memory card for PS2. Welcome back everyone, in case you didn't catch it before, my name is TubeBunny and this is my channel. Uh, for those of you new to the channel here, be sure to check that out. I don't have a particular uh, theme or type of videos that I upload, I just upload whatever kind of comes to me. And uh, today, a follow-up came to me. A few months back, I accidentally cleared out my memory card and so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to once again uh, get started with free boot and stuff. I don't have a PS2 so this wasn't a huge deal to me back then. I thought it would be a great holiday treat for my viewers and uh, for even new people. Uh, about the exploit, in the end you'll be able to run this on pretty much any PS2 including the slim ones with the exception of the uh, brand new slim ones and uh, hopefully I can put a little photo of uh, one of those in the video here those brand new slim PS2s. Uh, this will work on most slim PS2s but not those really new ones that came out um, recently. I really don't remember when that was. Um, however, to there's it's a two-step thing. Uh, first, basically what we're going to do is uh, we'll be using two exploits here. We'll start by copying, um, we'll be using some software on a computer to copy a save file to a USB drive and then we'll be using the Max Media software to copy that special save file to this memory card. Memory card allows us, with the help of one original PlayStation trigger disc, to start a homebrew. However, it's pretty annoying to put in a trigger disc every time you want to run uh, software. So uh, what we'll do is we'll use that to install yet another exploit piece of software on the memory card, which will allow you to um, start any PS2, including Slim, but not those new Slims that I was talking about before, with just the memory card and not having to use a trigger disc, which means you can borrow up, you can borrow pretty much all the supplies here. Um, but this this is what you'll need to get started. And if, if you didn't catch all that, I'll explain more carefully as you as we go along. So don't worry about it. Now, things you'll need to get started, um, pretty much everything we got here, video cable, power cable, um, chubby PS2, USB drive, uh, memory card, size doesn't really matter, we just got a classic 8MB one here. You'll also need, uh, like I was talking about before, an uh, original PlayStation game, and this has to be uh, any actual PlayStation game that works. And then you'll also need to find somewhere a copy of Daytel Max Media for PS2, although I've heard the same thing works with uh, Action Replay Max, uh, but don't quote me on that. What we'll be using in this video is uh, Max Media, uh, controller remote to control your PS2, and a television set. Grab your USB drive, a PlayStation game, and we're going to head on down to the computer. Alright, hopefully all unrawed everything alright. Uh, we got a few pieces of software here and we're going to be looking at what you need to do to get started with the exploit. Which will be done, by the way, uh, with a PlayStation, an original PlayStation trigger disc that you'll be putting in a chubby PS2. You want to get that disc out and uh, find somewhere on it uh, its ID number, which will be a um, number starting with S and then something US and then uh, five more numerals after that. And you'll want to open up Title Man Front End. Or maybe 
you open it as an administrator. If you're on Windows 7, a little important reminder here, but don't worry about it too much. I'll step you through what you need to get done. You want to press OK and uh, Title Man front end will open. You can click Create Title.db and it'll uh, let you know that it created it. And then here's where you want to pay very close attention. You want to put that disk ID number in this area down here. In my case, the disk's ID is SLUS90028. However, you need to put a point after the first three numbers. So, even though my disk actually says 90028, you want to put in 900.28. Very important little detail there. And you can kind of see that in the example if you get confused. You just want to press Add Exec. There won't be any confirmation or anything, uh, so make sure you press the button. Then you can exit Title Man front end. And inside of there, that title.db is what got created and changed. Then you can move on over here to PS2 Save Builder and open that up. Now I'll call your attention to one of the other items that was inside that uh, download RAR, and that was a file called exploit.max. It's over here. You're going to want to open that inside of PS2 Save Builder. All right, so here we are. We got exploit.max. We're going to open that up. And we got a few things on the list here. And a few things need to be changed. The first thing you'll want to do is uh, you're going to want to apply that title.db file to this uh, exploit save file, which we'll later use to copy to a memory card. And so the first thing you want to do is right click and then press add file. And then it'll ask you where you want to open it up at. And uh, you'll be looking for wherever uh, title man was at. So that'll be under titles. Title Man front end and then title.db and just press open and it'll add it to the list there. The second thing you want to do is change new file to Bodata System. In all caps with a dash between it there. And now you've successfully created your exploit save file and you will want to save this to a USB drive. The default save file there is fine. You'll want to save it as an armaxv3.max file. Anywhere on your USB drive is fine. And then uh, you can join me with your PlayStation Trigger Disc, original PS2 Max Media Disc, your PS2, memory card, and a US the USB drive uh, back in front of the television here in just a moment. Now, hopefully you've joined us by the telly uh, with your PS2, a controller, memory card, that USB drive that we just copied files to, and your own or borrowed copy of Max Media. Uh, before we get started, uh, a couple things. First of all, I might have mentioned this before, but not all USB drives work with this. Um, so if this doesn't work or we get stuck somewhere, I'll show you a lot of sp spots where it can get hung up at commonly if you have a USB drive that the console doesn't like. I don't even if, I don't even know if the console will like this one. I'm doing this uh, as we go along here on the memory card. And I can and so we'll just uh, we'll start up the console and we'll uh, we'll get started here. Got your copy of Max Media, or even though it doesn't look like it fits, it'll be fine. A number of you can tell we're using the standard F cables with what appears to be a HD TV, but uh, don't worry about that. None of the software we're using is really HD, um, so it really doesn't matter that much. This is just an example. This is just an extra monitor we had hanging around. Anyway. Oh, I almost forgot. You want to put your, your USB drive in the uh, PS2 also. 
once you got it plugged in there, um, if the, sometimes it takes a while. Um, you'll see the read indicator come on the thing for a long time. When it shows up, you'll see a kind of a grayed out um, uh, silhouette of a Sony PSP. You'll find you can uh, move back and forth with the controller between the memory card and the PSP, highlighting them both. And then go over to the picture of a PSP there. And it will appear empty for a long time um, until it finishes reading. Right, sorry to cut you all off there. Uh, it turned out that USB drive is going to be a no-go. So I have located a uh, SanDisk Cruiser 4GB that I have now uh, managed to borrow as well. And we're going to plug that up to the PS2, see what we can do. Uh, sometimes, uh, some troubleshooting you can do, um, I've heard people say if you try the other USB port, uh, you can sometimes have better mileage. Um, I've never tried this, so I don't know how true that is. Now, the way you'll know it's working is when you see that magnifying glass up there next to device contents. And sometimes, depending on the size of the drive, uh, you'll see that magnifying glass for a very long time. Once it's done, though, you'll finally see your files there. And so you'll want to select that. And then you're going to go over here on the side, um, hit the right arrow key, and then go down to Uncrush. And then you want to um, press the right arrow key to the memory card slot. And you'll pick that, and then you pick yes, and then uh, progress bar up there in the corner will uh, let you know how it's doing. And then it, it'll do that when it's all done. And you can press a triangle to back out. And you can go back to, uh, as long as you actually don't need to do anything else. Uh, Alrighty, here we are. Hopefully you've got your memory card and your PlayStation uh, trigger disc, and obviously a controller. Um, before we get started, I'll just show you what it looks like. Uh, we, when we copied that file over there, it says new file, and then made with PS2 save builder there. You can see it kind of looks like. Uh, yours won't have that corrupted data blue thing. Uh, that was something I had on the card. Um, I'm going to try and fix that, actually, with the help of Free McBoot. Uh, and we will get started here. You'll know if this works because uh, when that goes away, we will see a brief flash of light and uh, you launch ELF instead of the uh, PlayStation logo. If you see the PlayStation logo, something went wrong somewhere, you'll want to retrace your steps. Um, make sure that you had that save file on the screen we were just looking at and that everything copied over all right. All right, now... The version of U Launch Elf that comes with this is very, very old and difficult to work with. Uh, so I'm going to kind of hike you through the keystrokes that you have to do. You're going to want to press Select. And then, if I remember correctly, you'll want to use the arrow key just to go down to any of those buttons. Press Circle. The circle is your Select. I know in, in a lot of PS2 games, Cross is your Common Select button. And this uh, Circle will be your Common Select key. So just uh, hit Circle to select any of those buttons there and basically what we're just doing is we'll just set up a thing so it knows where to look for software at and you'll want to go to um, mass and if it can uh, if it can read your USB drive then you're in good shape and after you've got it um, after you've selected the USB drive you just want to scroll down to free boot press circle and then it'll be basically configured to be your shortcut key so then you want to go down to OK, and then you can pick OK. And all you gotta do is press circle or whatever button you chose to launch it. Press circle and say loading, and then if all goes well, uh, you'll see free McBoot. This is another spot where I believe I've got hung up on in the past um, with USB drives. Uh, let's see what all the options are. Well, I'm going to choose format memory card because my memory card screwed up and there's nothing on it. So obviously if you do that I'd, and there's anything you want to keep on there, I'd suggest you back it up. Anyway, I'm just going to go over to normal install and press cross. Uh, let's see, detecting memory card. Now it says this will install Freemic Boot on memory card one. Continue. 
I'm going to go over to OK and press cross. And do some loading. And then there's that. Oh. And then we'll just uh, watch it copy files. Oh, a little nugget of helpful information there. It looks like it tells an advance the install it takes about three and a half megabytes on um, on the card, uh, which does represent almost half of the eight megabytes of my um, lousy memory card here. But I, like I said before, I don't really play PS2 a lot, so this won't be a huge problem for me. Anyway, now it says free McPoot installed successfully on memory card one. That's good. I suppose now, uh, now we can launch Free McBoot. This is basically what it'll look like when you start the console. If you hear the Sony music and you see the boom thing, then you did something wrong first it might appear very much like the traditional PS2 menu but you'll see it's added a lot of nice touches and uh, still allowed it to kind of blend in although I think you can I think you can change the colors uh, basically you get your same browser and system configuration items that you had before you also get a proper version of ULaunch Elf ESR I believe oh ESR is a software that lets you uh, play backup DVDs of your PS2 games so if you're really that scared that your PS2 games will become unusably scratched, you can back them up to DVDs and play them with ESR. HD loader, if you have a hard drive and a chubby PS2 or a slim PS2 with some special voodoo modification done, you can play games straight from your hard drive and they'll load a lot faster. Simple Media System is great if you have a few media files and a standard def television. Otherwise, that won't look very well. Launch disk just uh, launches the disk in there. Um, I don't remember what that one does. And then Free McBoot Configurator gives you lots of exciting options and settings you can change inside of Free McBoot. And we won't cover those here. I don't want this to take forever and take valuable time out of your holiday season. I hope you all enjoyed revisiting, um, relearning this exciting classic PS2 tutorial that is a really a piece of uh, YouTube Tube Bunny history here. If you like what you've seen here today, I'd encourage you to give the video a thumbs up, um, hit that magic no longer yellow subscribe button, and add me as your YouTube buddy, and uh, then that way you can continue to keep tabs on the channel, and there's also a lot of other great stuff there, which is, by the way, at tubebunny.co.cc is my little uh, domain redirect thing. So Merry Christmas everyone and thanks for watching.